All right, we are live. Um, we are here with Coach John Weaver, back again, Coach, That's for a, uh, another live football clinic here. Uh, my name is Chris Haddad. Ryan Swingle is also on this call as well. Um, yes, sir. Coach is going to be presenting everyday drills, wide receiver everyday drills, and creating a subculture within your team. Uh, be before we get to that, we always got to give a shout-out to our sponsor, Team Builder. And Team Builder provides strength and conditioning software to more than 500 high school programs nationwide as well as the NFL. Uh, if you don't have Team Builder or any type of weightlifting organization plan, try these guys out. Use Victory promo code. You get a spread offense free 10-week program. Uh, those guys are great over there. They're going to help you get this thing going. So, uh, again, Team Builder, check those guys out. And Coach Weaver, the floor, we're going to turn it over to you. Uh, to get this thing going. Yeah, guys, man, I, I'm humbled, honored, thanked, uh, thankful for being on here. I'm sorry I couldn't come on on the February 4th show. Been been a crazy like clinic circuit deal, but uh, yeah. I appreciate you opening up the doors again and, and let me come. Like I guess it's the second tour, uh, <laughs> if you will, if you want to stick with the, the fighter pilot stuff that we do inside of uh, our, uh, our subculture, the Air Aid Brigade. So, uh, you know, today we're going to talk about everyday drills, and I think a lot of coaches want stuff. And when they want stuff, um, they want drills they can use not only in season, but, you know, right to start spring practice. Uh, summer workouts are going to happen uh, here shortly. I mean, you blink your eye and you're going to be in football season again. Uh, so there's there's things that I think coaches want. And what we did is we came up with cool taglines for our guys. So I think the fastest way to get drills across to, co to coaches and kids is you come up with a cool name of it. They remember it uh, just like they remember definitions. And then we roll with it. Uh, so for us, these have kind of come to fruition. These are our everyday drills. Uh, obviously, I'll put this disclaimer out there. If you want more stuff, reach out to me on Twitter. I, I can give you all the drills that we do. Uh, but these are the ones that I thought were everyday drills that were essential to, to help us build from um, day in, day out, week in, week out as the season uh, continues on. Uh, and, you know, obviously we won the 2019 state championship. So, yeah, and coach, as you're as you're pulling up your presentation and sharing your screen here, um, you know you, you can talk a little bit about your run in the state championship and what you guys were able to do and the success that you guys were able to have. Yeah, we, you know, we threw for five ninety three, and four of our guys caught over one hundred twenty yards receiving. And you know, anytime you have that kind of success, people are going to want to know what what you do, and you know, we, we've had a great quarterback. So obviously it starts with that, but you know, we'll get into this. Look, if you want to reach out to me on Twitter, uh, that's my email. Go ahead and check that out. But, uh, here we go. And for drills for us, uh, these first group, they're called Willie Mays catches. It's an over the shoulder pass that you give uh, to the guys. It's probably one of the most challenging, even if you think about in the NFL and you kind of see these guys, uh, it takes a lot of concentration, coordination. Most importantly, you have to keep your eye on the ball. So a lot of times I was thinking, you know, receivers, when they run, guys, they they put their hands out. So when, you, when you're running, you want to obviously keep pumping your arms and you're looking backwards, you're over the shoulder, you're, you're running, trying to look for the ball. Um, this drill for us is great and it emphasizes the mechanics and techniques we use on catching the ball. And it reinforces the importance. We say two eyes, two uh, two hands, uh, and you catch the ball with two hands. So that's what we're looking at. Uh, so many times those beat balls are dropped. So if you want to look right here, uh, watch the slot receiver. Let's go right here. Watch him on an over-the-shoulder catch. And we call them Willie Mays catches. So I can rewind that for you and show you again. But I mean, splitting two dudes, and you have to concentrate on that. Uh, Big time stuff. So a lot of times, and we'll watch this guy right here as I as I'm explaining this. Um, they're dry because the receiver takes his head off the ball, and you know he doesn't accelerate through the catch. So what we want to do is show our eyes and hands late. And on the deep ball, you want the ball to be caught high with his with the kid's hands. The ball it, it trying to drop some. Say if you drew like a frame um, around like you would catch it in the frame. So a lot of times I like drills guys that simulate what we're going to do in game. So I'm not one of these drill guys like, Hey, let's just do this drill and say we did a drill. I want any drill that I do to be um, mirrored in game time. 
So here it is again in the slot. Tell you, watch these. They're Willie Mays catches. Why are they called Willie Mays? It's easy for our guys to remember, and everybody knows what Willie Mays did, right? Famous for the over shoulder catch in the end zone or in the uh, outfield. Here it is again. This is probably one of the toughest catches all year. Uh, the guy's going to push him in the back. But once again, we work that drill all the time. We throw the ball vertically. We want to make those catches. Hey, Coach, I think this is a great drill, especially if you do run smash fade from a two-by-two two set. This is a great drill to emphasize that slot fade, which can be a little bit awkward, and you have that trajectory of the football dropping in like that. Yeah, and then, you know, you look up there, and, I mean, here you go again at the top of the screen. That's, I mean, that ball is coming in a weird trajectory, and you got to – you show your hands and eyes late. Uh, let me go back to that one real quick. Watch as he's running. Now watch the when the ball drops in. I'll slow it down. The ball's coming in, eyes and hands late to catch the ball secure. That's in the state championship. All right, this next one, probably one of my favorites. Um, we've called it pester. We've called it combat catches, but it's done with a partner. He runs right beside him. And he's a distractor. Like, you don't want to go and knock the ball down. All you want to do is be a distractor to the guy so you can high point it. We work high point, uh, back shoulder, and then we work some throw by in there. But it, you just want to get between the ball and the receiver. So we, we, we emphasize, you know, high point, back shoulder, and throw by. And I'll say, hey, combat catches, pester drill. Uh, and they know what to do. It's done at like 75%. High, high point, two eyes, two hands. Uh, guys, also, we use tennis balls, as you saw right there. We use tennis balls with every drill that we do. And a lot of times, I'll go into the Sugar Bowl, and, and I saw Baylor use tennis balls, and they're warming up with the receivers with – with one hand catches, look, I want two hands on everything. And this is just a close up uh, of the drill. You can call it combat catches, uh, pester drill, whatever you want to call it. We just, we use combat catches. Um, but high point and secure. Uh, once again, two hands. Watch the top of the screen right here. Remember I said before, the drill has to bring game mode. So watch the guy at the top. Remember how the drill looked? And I want the drill to be easy, the drill to be hard so the games can be easy. Here it is again, right here at the bottom. Looks just like the drill, doesn't it? That's what we wanna do, guys. Combat catches, pester drill. Uh, here it is again at the top. Once again, you want a high point. And I'll get into this real quick, and, and we talk about this drill. We tell our receivers a lot of times, um, I kept saying two years ago, like, get vertical, get vertical, get vertical. Well, what did that mean by get vertical? And I wanted them to have something tangible they could look at. So anytime we catch a ball, whether it's pre-practice, seven-on-seven, two-on-two, pre-game, I'm going to stress to our guys, as soon as we high point, we're going to get next line. So that tells them next line. So if that next line, so say we catch the ball on the nine, okay, the next line would be the goal line. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah, yeah, yep. I like that. I want to go next line. Um, I mean, he's actually working two drills in there. So we're working combat, tightrope, and next line drill right there. So uh, I'll show you some more of those here in a second. Uh, here it is again. Probably one of the best catches. Uh, you got mossed. Watch this high point. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Goes in high point. So it's combat catch. And I got a picture. Um, just for a touchdown, you can see us down here going nuts. Um, and there's a picture of the catch. And I think combat catches helped with that drill. Everything we catch is with two hands and two eyes. Well, look where his hands are. Look where his eyes are. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Um, I think here it is again. Combat catch. Boom. Yeah, because a lot of these a lot of these catches, coach, the defensive back is actually in phase. He's in pretty good position, but yeah, as you mentioned, the drill just helps amplify the catch a lot more. Correct. So we want it to be as hard as we can, Chris, in practice. So uh, I'll tell the guys sometimes I'll say, "Hey, stick your hand in his face. Like, put your hand on his face mask." So he has to visibly, you know have to find his eye like he has to use his eyes um so yeah i mean we want practice to be hard uh so this drill is tightrope 
And, you know, when you're a kid, you didn't like, we do another drill called toe tap. I'll show you. But tightrope for us, we want to sprint, catch the ball, or you can do this at 75%. You know, when you're using tennis ball, you want to, you're more working on the mechanics, two eyes, two hands. You want to stick your foot in the ground and now they're working next line. A lot of this is done with our quick game. If you remember me talking in our last clinic, we learned, we run a lot of pre-snap reads, like quick outs and stuff like that. Um, and promote sideline awareness. <clears throat> and it works great with, with the next drill. I'm going to show you, but um, you know, how many times you want to work this drill? That's T-Bone right there. He's one of the best ones at it about getting upfield. Uh, and here it is in game. So we run the mesh, catch the ball, stick your foot in the ground, go next line. I'll mess with him here. I'll say, hey, one, one ball, one catch. But um, that's one thing I'll never tell our guys is to catch the ball. That is not a a term to use when, uh, like, it's like telling a pitcher to throw strikes. Like, don't you think he's trying to throw strikes? Absolutely. Uh, for us, you know, we want to catch the ball. So there's always something to emphasize, whether it be two eyes, two hands, or my hands in position, um, stuff like that. So – Toe tap drill. So everybody's done this when they were in like fifth grade or even like eighth grade when you're playing in the backyard. Hey, throw it up <laughs> and you can get two inbounds, right? So a lot of times I know high school and college, all you have to do is get one foot inbound. That's totally fine with me. We want to leave no doubt that we have two inbounds. No doubt. So with this drill, uh, it's important for receiver to be able to catch the ball and get out of bounds. It's also stay inbound, secure the catch. So we'll throw these, like sometimes they will be laser beams. Sometimes they'll try to make circus catches, but you see his eyes, he catches the ball. He goes up two eyes, two hands, comes down and tries to get two feet inbounds. So I'll show you uh, some, some stuff right here. Um, you know, sometimes we'll say, Hey, drag your foot or whatever, but all these drills we do here, we also do in pregame to watch the bottom. Work the drill. Work the drill. Here's the next one. So we run uh, a little speed out right here, but I want you to watch, watch this guy and watch where his eyes go. Watch the referee where his eyes go. What's he looking at? Our feet. feet yeah. Looking at our feet. And look, we want to get both feet inbound so you can see him trying to shuffle both feet. And guys, coaches, you that you're listening, I'm just telling you, you have to emphasize these things. So it's not what we know; it's what these kids know because they're going to play on Friday night. So every time we do this, it's a repetition. So how many times do you rep it? As many times as you need to with a tennis ball, with a golf ball, anything that you can do, uh, the routes that you run in game. Go back and watch your film. Hey, what were some what are some high percentage throws that we make and our kids make a lot of catches up? We'll then start forming a drill around that to manipulate that. Uh, so here's the flat out right here. Once again, we make the catch. Look at the, the, uh, the referee right here. Where does eyes go? Feet. Feet. And watch. We talk about getting two feet inbound so that you saw the drill. They're trying to get two feet inbound. It'd been easy for spider right here just to get one inbound. We'll watch him. Pop up. Gets two inbounds, leaving no doubt about that. All right, concentration catches for us. Um, <clears throat> this is a fun one for us. So you're trying to make the guy drop a ball. You can have some fun with this. Um, they need to catch the ball, even when they're the, like it's being tipped or a defender has their hands in the middle of the way. Uh, so you put a receiver in the middle, and you put three guys around. And look, we, this is our head junior high football coach. And I was like, hey, you want to have some fun? Try to knock the ball out. He goes, absolutely. Uh, I said, look, we like making a competition to this thing too. So try to knock it away. And that's what they're doing right here. These are five, four seniors um, that do this. But here it is right here. You can you can see some of them. But look, it promotes concentration through the both the anticipation of the catch, through the catch. Um, they maintain focus on the ball and help them catch the ball in traffic. Like I said before, we have a lot of fun. But watch. Um, Watch these catches. So number 12, right here at the bottom. He's got a guy coming at him and a guy on, on his back. You want to make the catch. 
There's another one right here, bottom of the screen. So you rake the number 20 rakes his arm. Mm -hmm. Just make a drill to where you have to concentrate on the ball when you catch it. Same thing here. Here's, here's a fun one. So check out the top of the screen. And I really want you to watch when, when this ball's thrown right there, watch the other sideline. This is the state championship game. It's tied up. They think they've picked it. You see that? Mm -hmm. We have actually taken the ball from him and now working three drills. So we're working concentration catch, tight rope to next line. And you see he, he wants to get to the next line because the 40, and coaches, for you to understand this, he catches the ball at the 39. Well, his next line is now the 45. That's to the line. This is the next line. And it took a little bit for our guys to get, you know, have that, and I had to show them, you know, hey, this is what I mean by next line. So the coaches and, you know, a lot of times you think, hey, they ought to know that. Well, no, kids don't want to be told. They want to be coached. So I think it's important that you, you coach them on this is, hey, that's to the line. We want to go next line. And you'll be amazed at how much you'll get out of that. Um, so releases. I, I like working releases. Coaches, if you have anything to help me on releases, I, I'm all for it. Um, but we use two types. It's one step and two step. And it's real simple. And we call we use a rip technique. We use a uh, and a SWAT technique, or I call it chop, because I think the word chop is a lot more violent than the word SWAT. Like I want to chop down a tree, I'm just going to SWAT a fly. So we want to work, work right. chop, and then we want to rip. Uh, so these are just some of the things that we do. We'll put a coach here, um, one of the injured guys, and, and they have to hit the pad. We'll also use this red dummy uh, that's over here to throw, uh, but we'll work rip. But I think the shoots help you out a lot too because you get. Um, you get under uh, their shoulder pad. I want to tell this guy when he rips through that I want this shoulder to be at this thigh. If that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what we use. One step, two step releases. And uh, here's just some of the things we do. This is postseason. They, they've already like they're removed. Um, these guys are removed like three months from football. So. Like, hey, y'all, come on. But they'll line up on the inside of it. And there's a good rip right there. Uh, if you notice something right now, as you're watching this, uh, we're doing a lot of things that are on a line when it deals with stacking and all that. So stacking is huge for us. We'll do a lot of drills on a line. So we're working two and one right there. We're working rip, and then it looks just like a Willie Mays catch. Then we'll put it all together. So we'll work escape, stack, and then a Willie Mace. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of cushions. So we'll work man, we'll work off man. We work cover two, cover four release. I mean, we see it all with as, as vertically. I mean, we throw the ball vertically a lot. So we can no telling what we're going to see from week to week. But here it is, escape, stack, Willie Mays. You see they're staying on the line. Right. Um, boom, boom, stack, chop, working the line. And I think that's uh, – if I can emphasize one thing at all with our wide receiver drills, it's work on getting back stacked so you can have your quarterback have – say if this is the sideline, he has, you know, four and a half yards to where when you see a lot of people run the fade, they'll get squished out and they'll start fading out. Well, now the quarterback, uh, he has to be almost pinpoint accurate to drop it in that hole, well, now you're giving him a bigger surface area. Um, here we go. So escape, stack, then we give him a ball, Willie Mays over the shoulder catch. Same deal. And it, they know I am on their tail if they're not back stacked. Uh, so here it is right here at the bottom. Gets off, works to get back stacked. Mm -hmm. Touchdown. State championship mm -hmm. game. Uh, here it is again. Work to get back stacked. I got on on this. I would like for him to get back stacked a little more. Um, I mean, but we're beating a dude off the, off the jump. So 
Um, he's like, Coach, I scored. I was like, hey, good point. And then, look, val validity is when you show your guys the same thing that happens in the Super Bowl. So you set them up, get back stacked, and then let the ball carry you outside. Same deal. Sammy Watkins, come on now. Everybody saw that Super Bowl. Yep. Uh, so here we go, get into blocking. So the key to any elite receiver for us is, or any offense, if you really think about it, is you want to generate explosive plays. And how do you generate big plays? Uh, you increase your team's chances to score when you do all that. So for us, during 2019, uh, a number of our touchdown drives contained at least one explosive play. So I don't have all that data, but I know we had at least one explosive play on all our touchdowns. Um, so my question for our guys was, look, how can we – help our offense generate more explosive plays. Well, obviously, their answer was to do what? Catch deep balls, coach. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> we can generate yards after a catch by going next line. We can throw a short route and we can get vertical. All those things are great. And then I challenge them with this. How about the far less glamorous way is to aid in our run game? Yeah. They're like, whoa. I was like, look, guys, I've been challenged by our head coach to, hey, let's let's be great in all phases. So let's catch, let's get yards after catch, let's get next line, but let's block. And that was a challenge from our head coach to me and then me to our our unit. And I said, look, guys, block, blocking for us is not optional. But we stress it daily. It's in pregame, it's in pre-practice, it's critical for us. If you really think about, we're going to have wide splits. So if we want to move the ball on the ground, once we do that, it also sets up our passing game. So I was like, guys, if you want more yards passing, you got to block. And they were like, well, how does that work? And I was like, well, uh, easy, dude. Like a running back can get two to three yards, I tell him, by himself. Like a running back can get two to three yards based on like the offensive line block and all that stuff. They can get probably five to six on cutting ability of their own. I said, guys, they get eight to 12 because of us. Yeah. And a lot of times, I, I and I showed them clips, and I said, look, there's going to be a surefire way that I'm going to help you so here's one of them. Uh, it's one of my favorites for blocking. It's called chair. And SW mean, SWD for them means I want you to sprint, wave, and then you're going to drive. So like, if they don't remember what chairs is, they can remember what SWD is. So you're going to sprint up there. And you're going to grab the chair. You're going to wave back and forth. Now, I told you they've been removed from football for about three months. You actually want to sit on this chair. So you want the seat in between your legs to promote. I mean, they're doing a good job here. To promote a wide base, much like an offensive line coach would. You want to sprint up to it, wave, and then when you want to punch it out, it simulates the blocking. Um, so don't let the defender get around you. He engage with you, lock on, use shoulder pads, any part of the chair to promote the drive part of it. Um, and it helps us to keep a wide base at the point of contact with the defender. So a lot of basketball situation here, right? Like you want to slide with the defense. Same deal um, with our chairs drill. Well, after we do chairs, we'll transition right into shoot fit. So there's the shoots again. Um, low hips, shoot our hands, thumbs up, engage and grab the breastplate of the DB, and then squeeze the air out of the defender with a wide base. Now, they don't do a very good job of it, but I'll explain right here. So we engage, our hips are low. Let me show you. Our hips are low, we drive out. Now, what I want to do right here, see there's air in between the defender and the receiver? Well, now we can get called for holding. So I tell them a lot of times I want to squeeze the air out. And now I have my hands inside. I'm, I'm less likely to get called for holding. Squeeze the air out. Here it is again. Here it is from behind. And look, shoots or we had a we had a running back coach made these and he's like, hey, I have a present for you. And I was like, what's that? He goes, shoots. I was like, this is amazing. Thank you. Um, I think they were like eight dollars for both of them after all the parts were bought. So, yeah, yeah coach, I was going to ask, how do you determine uh, your shoot height? Was it just something you guys made uniform and, you know, yeah, it's five, I think by three. <clears throat> um, we're going to make a shorter one four by three because obviously we have shorter receivers. So I think I'm going to do the height based on the receiver's height. Um, Got it. We're going to make, like, I think two more or three more to help out with that. Um, but, yeah, they're five 
by so five feet by three feet. But there it is again. Uh, we call those shoot fits. And then we put it all together. So base fit drive under the shoots, slow down, engage. And all this does is it's what you do on Friday nights. It's how you block a guy. Base fit drive. Same deal. And then everybody does the mirror drill, right? So with the mirror drill, I like to know if every kid goes. So I'm going to be the first one to go. So I know when it get back, when it gets back up to Russ, hey, I, I know we've, we're going to start over. So for mirror drill for us, I'll put the cone, say about five to six yards apart. I'll have him wave around and I'll say engage. And then he'll engage his hands. Have him sprint. He starts breaking down. Watching his belly button. Hips don't lie like Shakira. If you watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there you go. That's the drills that we do. And look, I'm coaching every kid up. Obviously, if you want to go faster, um, set up two cones and stand in the middle of them and watch them go back and forth. Uh, but, you know, they have to be coached up. You got to be the next guy. You got to be the next guy. I mean, this is in summer workouts, guys. Uh, and we're doing these things. And then we fit, refit. So we want to emphasize the drill. Well, now we're going to put it. And have a guy, we, we tell our guys, hey, we're going to move either this way, we're going to move this way, or we're going to move this way, uh, based on blocking the outside number. And that's what we tell our guys a lot of time. We want to block the outside number, uh, and then the running back or who, the quarterback, whoever's running the ball is going to run to our butt. Uh, here they are in game of some of them, how they've worked. So you want to look at the top of the screen here. Here we go. 34 does a good job of it right here. Number 19 misses the cut right off of our butt. And you can see, oh, where is it? In the end zone. Let me go back to it. Watch the slot staying engaged at the top. Yep. And look, I don't tell our guys no block, no rock. Uh, because if you're a good receiver, uh, you're going to learn to block in, in a game, just like if you would block in a practice. And we're going to, like, if you're going to be open, we're going to throw you the ball. So I can't say no block, no rock. Like, I know their coach, like, if you don't block, you're not going to get the ball. Well, I don't believe that. That's just something personal for me. Like, if you're, if you're a good receiver and your strong point is catching the ball, guess what? We're going to throw you the ball. If your strong point is blocking, well, then you're probably going to be in on running plays to block for us. So um, I think that's coaching to your talent, but don't tell a kid, hey, no block, no rock. I mean, some kids block great. Some kids don't block great. Yeah. So here it is again at the top. Just staying with the block. Uh, here's number two at the bottom. It's our first game in Montgomery. Engage. Mm. Nice and easy. Uh, once again, you're, you're coached to do this in practice. So, Sometimes I'll even tell them, like, hey, I don't know where this ball is going to pop. I don't know where the running back is going to pop. Uh, but watch the top of the screen right here. Watch the top. Watch number four. The ball's not even coming his way. I'm going to stay with your block. And then there's those other instances when you want to watch right here. Watch this guy right here. Um, you just got to let people know that you're going to be blocking them for all night long. And it just sets up a uh, a mindset for our guys. So, um, are there any questions currently on? Yeah, just got one question here, Coach. Uh, yeah. When teaching wide receivers, inside or outside foot up and why? Okay, great question. That's yeah. an awesome question. Uh, I think there are a lot of great um, – I think there's a lot of great – DB coaches and a lot of great defensive coordinators. So for us, we always put outside foot up due to timing of the routes that we run. Okay. I.e. a slant uh, for us, for just an example. But I think there's a lot of great coaches that notice like what foot's up, depending on what route you're going to run. And then they start putting in 
hey, what if he's like two yards inside the hash and right foot's up? They limit your number of routes that you run. So now they can they can kind of game plan around what route you're going to run. So for us, we just made it simple. Everybody outside foot's up. Got it. Now it's you can't distinguish like what's he going to run? How's he going to run it? Um, you know, it's not predicated on your feet. It's predicated on, hey, how much game film have you watched? And hey, now you have to be ready for this route, this route, this route, and then two more routes that go along with this. I hope that answered that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's perfect. Yep. All right, guys. One thing I'm real passionate about, and um, guys, I can't, I can't stress to you enough, is subculture. And I don't know where y'all are with your subculture of your team. And, and I'm just, I'm real big on this. I, I've been in a six-year journey with this, and. I knew that we wanted to be something special. I knew that we needed to be something big time within our program to set us apart. But uh, I'm going to show you this Air Raid Brigade clip. Uh, the Clarion Ledger and Mackenzie Salmon did an awesome job doing this for us. Um, this was during the middle of the season. And uh, I'm going to play this, and then I'll talk more about how to incorporate culture into um, – Hey, Coach, actually, before you play, we had another question come through. I, I just want to, while we're on the topic of just yeah. talking about yeah. um, just wide receiver drills before you play this, uh, we had a question come through. How much indie time do you get per practice? <laughs> That's another great question. <laughs> we are we run, instead of five-minute periods, we run four-minute periods. So in the summer, I get 12 minutes to 15 minutes, give or take a minute. <laughs> and then during the season, I get eight. And a lot of my work comes from, and I'll get in this with relationships with kids, but we'll get a lot of stuff done pre-practice. And then if what we don't get done, we get done after practice. But I'll tell you this, for this eight minute, eight minutes, I am fast and furious and there is no downtime. Um, and that's, uh, I'm stealing this from Nick Saban, but I made this drill tape. Uh, and I'm going to show our guys that are new to us even before we go out, hey, this is this drill. This is how we do this drill. So when I go outside, I don't have to spend time, hey, this is what this drill does. This is what I expect you to do. I'm going to show them during the spring what we do um, in meetings and stuff like that. I just think it's important. But uh, as a coach, man, you, it's fast and it's furious. I think that's the reason why I lost like 10 pounds during the season is it's wide open for eight minutes. And then anytime I can emphasize a drill, like when we go two on two, when we're in seven on seven, I can say, hey, let's get on the side real quick and let's work some drills that maybe they didn't get enough reps of. And then I'd say, hey, let's go work on this while you're not going right now. Go get the plane. Like, all right, let's work this drill. Yep. Yep. Um, anytime you can steal time, I'm all about it. Perfect. So uh, if you don't mind, I won't, I'd love to open this up. It's like a two and a half minute clip. Yeah. yeah this this is who we are. And then I'll talk about how it started. Uh, but here you go. It's hard to say Air Raid Brigade, so we say ARB uh, and just go with that. And our call sign, I say, cl or cliche, is take flight. Identities within teams are a huge thing. And this is nothing really new. You know, if you think back to the Purple People Eaters with Minnesota Vikings, uh, the Orange Crush with the Denver Broncos, I knew that there was a sense of identity that you needed within position groups, within a football program, and uh, with us throwing the ball. Uh, we need to have something fun. So we, we came up with like Money Crew was one of them. Um, Flight School was another one, I believe. And we really couldn't decide on one until I started thinking about Air Raid and the offense that we run. And we throw the ball a lot and we have an awesome quarterback. Let's fill it. So I'm like, you know that. And then I thought about my dad's in the military and I was like, what about Brigade? And I was like, that's a subunit of the Army and all that. So I was like, that's kind of what we are. Uh, with our football team. And that, it kind of stuck. I'm Tyler Starnes. My call sign is T-Bone. call sign is Spider. I'm Landon Fulcher. My call sign is Suave. Smooth. <laughs> my is j -Do, So first, uh, first and last name. We wanted to be, I don't want to say set apart from the team, but a subunit of the team where, where our guys, I, I challenge them daily to make plays. And I think they thought, well, he's not going to write notes every game for us. And it's turned into, I mean, Russ, I just saw he's had everyone from last year. And, you know, I, I love my players. And I think that's one way to show that you love and that you care. I mean, football is 
is the vehicle that drives what we do for a living. I think it's really inspiring. I think it's nice for him to do that, especially, you know, before real big games, just to tell us how great we've been. It, um, it's actually something you want to read before a game, just because you're real nervous of, like, your mind's racing. But just to see, like, you know, there's no pressure and just go out there and play. I think it gives, like, a sense of confidence for the game, knowing that he took his time out to write that, that he trusts us, and that we all trust each other to do what we're supposed to do and get the job done. You know, there's just so many things in life uh, that football is just a small part of it. And if we can take a time to write a handwritten note, uh, to get a badge, to come up with a cool call sign, to have them part of a, a unit and an identity uh, in their high school career, I think that speaks volumes for what our sports uh, are going to nowadays. So that's it, guys. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this thing real quick and just kind of get on here with you and yeah. talk yeah. about culture and and what it does yeah. and, and how you can how you can promote it within your your unit so i think one and i'll talk about process of the ships with you if you will uh when we talk about relationships with our guys you know that's the foundation of anything that happens with any sports team um with any kind of even in a classroom if you really think about it is you have to have the relationship piece and then and then that works into leadership and then you get to the player ownership and a lot of times that subculture kind of takes you to the next level so i could have called our guys you know wide receiver unit or, or whatever but uh i love the movie top gun i love everything about it and i started thinking you know there's a, a lot of cool things about a fighter a fighter jet isn't it i mean Maverick 2 or whatever is coming out. So for us, I started thinking about like the cool stuff and the dash and the precise measurements and the amount of money those things cost. I was like, what if our guys had that? And you saw they were, they had call signs. Well, I was like, what if we had call signs and had like badges? And then we, we instituted a handwritten note thing. And it just, it started to become something to look forward to on Friday nights. And, um, Guys, it's it's taken us to another level within our wide receiver unit. So, you know, to get a call sign, you, you have to uh, have somebody give it to you. So, you know, Maverick wasn't given Maverick because it's Maverick. Somebody had to give it to him. So, Chris, your call sign would come from us. Uh, yeah. Ryan, yours would come from us. Like, you couldn't make up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and I, I think it's really cool because you're talking about high school kids here. And, you know, they're always going to be a part of ARB. They're always going to be a part of that unit. So for us, you know, and they look, they thought it was cheesy. They thought it was cheesy the first time. But when you produce, let me get this picture up. Um, I can mirror some pictures real quick and kind of show you kind of the relationship piece of, of who we are and what our guys kind of bought into. Um, let me go right here. Like this one right here. I mean, these are senior dudes now. And this didn't happen to us. This is two years in. But guys, when they, this thing first started, they thought, this dude's crazy. You know, I, <laughs> I came up with like ARB and, and then we had some other ones. But, you know, you start doing things like this. You start hanging out with each other and. They don't call me Coach Weaver. I don't get hung up on you calling me a coach. I could care less, honestly. You know, you win a championship. Now, is that culture mean if you instill a culture and in a subunit and the importance of it, you know, is that going to help you win a championship? I, I don't know. Probably, probably not. I don't. It did for us. It's just how intentional you are with it. It's what you do with it inside of. And look, sky's the limit with how you want to do. Um, what you do inside of your unit group. I mean, those dudes were, were all state. Um, let me find the one, I think it's down here. I mean, I made these graphics for these guys, but you know, I, I just think it to set you apart, it needs to happen and it needs to be intentional. So the handwritten note thing also guys, it, I like handwritten notes. I mean, those are, those aren't very, those aren't written very much anymore. It's a text message or a tweet or, hey, let me just call you real quick. But 
when you get somebody to take time to write a handwritten note and then present it to you right before you play, I mean, this is every game, guys. Um, now, Coach, really, how does this trickle from the other positional groups? Like, do you get, you know, I'm just trying to think of like a wide receiver core. You have a subculture. Do other coaches on your team do this as well? Yeah. Or is it something that you guys have just done primarily through wide receivers? Uh, we, we started with wide receivers. That's a great question. Our yeah. offensive line has now been called the trench mob. Okay. And he's – our old line coach, Kenny Williams, has started it. And, you know, I think it's it's contagious because, look, you we're all under the umbrella of MRA football. We're under that umbrella, which for us, that's who you want to be. But I think to get personal with kids, to, you know, they're, they're big on, on nicknames because whether you know it or not, you know, they're going to give nicknames to kids. I had a nickname when I was growing up. My nickname was Dream. All it was for Dream Weaver, the song by Gary Wright. So I was named Dream. So you get nicknames all the time, but you know, I think it. I think it's needed. Is it imperative I, to be good? I, I don't. I don't know. There's not enough data out there for that. But you start thinking about the Hogs with the Washington Redskins, and you know the Electric Company was the offensive line group. Um, when OJ Simpson was with the Buffalo Bills because they turned the juice loose, they turned the juice on. Yeah. You know? And the, so the, it's, it's been a common thing, you know, the purple people, purple people leaders. Um, yeah. I was gonna say a lot of, you know, subculture groups within teams do happen with the offensive line, right? The hogs, like you mentioned, are yeah. having that group together and, you know, rightfully so because they do so much work and don't get the credit for it. So I yeah. just think it's interesting when you have uh, a wide receiver group being, you know, a subculture. And then even if the quarterbacks can have a subculture, I know it's just usually two or three of them, but right. the running backs and so on and so forth. Right. You know, and I, I don't know. I think if my wide receiver group, Chris, it's the most prima donna group on a, any football team. Yeah. Everybody wants to catch a touchdown. Everybody wants the ball. So I thought it was important to build relationships with those guys and have them, hey, I'm going to play for you and you're going to play for me and we really don't care who gets the ball. Now, did that happen on day one? No. Did that happen on day 15? Absolutely not. It's it's constant, um, you know, hanging out. I mean, we went and took them bowling. Um, we go and do things together. You know, I mean, you saw in that clip, um, you know, we have parents that get involved with it. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable with with the stuff that we do and and why we do it, you know, why not have fun with it? Mm -hmm. That's how yeah. I view it. Yeah, for sure. So, for sure. You know, I, I think it's important. Uh, a lot of people, you know, a lot of coaches, I think it's a gimmick sometimes. Like, oh, it, that doesn't work. You know, culture doesn't defeat strategy or whatever. No, you need the X's and O's. I'm just saying make it co-curricular with it, if you will. Like, have culture. And have X's and O's. Let these kids enjoy their high school, their college. I mean, even their pros. I mean, let them let them have fun and be a part of a unit and identity. I mean, everybody wants to be a part of something. Yeah. So. Perfect. Now, Coach, we've got a couple of questions that come in here. Um, yeah. You know, I don't want to cut you off if, if you're still no, going, go but go I think this, these questions would fit perfectly just with uh, everything you're talking about. Now. Uh, how long has uh, ARB been in existence? When were they established officially? They were established uh, the spring of 2017, so two and a half years. We're going, year, we're going into year three as we speak. So it's a great question. So they have their own uh, cliche. Last year's was take flight. This year's is next episode. So it'll be lowercase N E capital X capital X playing off 20 the year the the night the 2020 season, uh, and then the word episode. So we'll break it down on next episode. Got it. And then uh, the next one I had here, you know, Ryan, I'm sure you got a couple of questions as well. Uh, I saw you guys have like badges, right? Or things that you hand out to your players. Is that like, uh, I thought I saw one of the videos that you guys have, like a certain oh, yeah. thing you give everyone. Yeah. So we do have a badge. Yeah. Everybody gets a badge, not just seniors. So if you're a sophomore to a senior, you get a badge. Now what we do with those badges, um, we're probably going to put them on our travel bags this year. Um, you don't have a number. So where the number is on the travel bag, you'll just put that over that. Um, and they're unique. I mean, we have guys like honey badger. We have, um, who else we called a kid. He didn't have a call sign and nobody knew what to call him. So we just called him new guy. 
And that was his call sign. It was a new guy. And he's like, I want a new one. I was like, that's what we called you. Was new <laughs> so you're a new guy. Um, it was cool. You know, we have um, a guy. Was it Tybo's one? I mean, there's so many. But, yeah, they got a, they got a badge for it. Yeah. And uh, I think I have a little bit of, of who we are uh, that I can share with you real quick. Yeah, and while you're pulling that up, just the next question that kind of ties into all this is when do you start the – yeah and the, and the power of it i think you can can see i don't know if it's gonna be able to play uh and me be able to hear you guys can you hear me yeah i can oh. hear you i don't know if it'll play i'm just gonna turn the volume down and let it rip your screen's not shared this is uh who we are i don't know if it's gonna do it it's not doing it I'm, okay. I'm technology deficient <laughs> when it comes to stuff like this. No, so coach, I, I have call signs and stuff. I'll try to pull that video up before, before we get off. I'll, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No worries. Uh, you know, what I just wanted to allude to as well is like, when do you start the subculture? You know, I know, is it just a varsity thing? Is it a JV and freshman thing? Like when, like when do you start to implement all these call signs for these kids? You know, is it just, as mentioned, a varsity thing where the freshmen can start to look up to being part of the ARB as they grow older, or is it, from day one, you're in the freshman program, you have a call sign. No, I, I think it's when you get to us, when you get to be a varsity football player, because uh, those older guys are going to give you your call sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so there's one right now, like, we don't know whether to call him uh, Mouth or Gap or Shorty. We don't okay. know yet. And he, you can kind of get the reaction of people when you call them a, a nickname. They're like, I don't like that. And you're like, that's the one where you, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, look, and a lot of people like don't know why your call sign is your call sign. Uh, so like, like I said before, I wanted to be called captain and then they just started calling me pilot and it stuck. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, what do you got? I think my biggest question for you off of the culture aspect of it is I feel like a lot of people talk about having position coaches and coordinators being the culture driver, but how can you speak on the uh, culture that your head coach at MRA sets in, uh, in order for you to drive that subculture? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. So we always talk, the vision comes from our head coach, whatever he wants done under the big umbrella of MRA football, it comes from him. So the vision is from our head coach with Herbert Davis. Uh, after that, it's trickled to us. So the vision is spoke to us as assistants. And it's our job as assistants to promote the culture to the kids. Does he love the subunit? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's the Ohio state deal when urban was there, like you have nine units or eight units, whatever he wants us to be. He challenges us to be the head coach of our unit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that gives a, a sense of us to say, Hey, I, I have to run this unit for our right. head coach. There's an accountability piece there that, Hey, I have to be good on the field. I have to be good with X's and O's. I have to be good in drills, but also how am I building relationships with my players? So they'll lay in the street for me, you know, right. not just run through a brick wall, but I want those guys to lay in the street. I want to fascinate them daily in some form or fashion. Um, but he's all for it, you know, but once again, like I mentioned some stuff to him today, which is a great question, right? I mean, some stuff about, hey, can we make the number six uh, like a special number for the wide receiver group? And he's like, ah, no, because you got guys that have had numbers and, and this. And I was like, well, what about playing off our culture with 36 plus two? Uh, it's our soundbite. 36 plus two for you is our soundbite that we have. It came from him. And a lot of things that go on with us go through him. So yeah. I, was, I couldn't just start ARB and be like, hey, we're doing this like. Hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing. What do you think about? He goes, yeah, yeah, I like it. Let's do this, this, this. So there are there are parameters that are set, um, but he's all for it. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. I think that's the biggest thing is just having that that communication from the top down, having that constant communication. There's no there's no gray area. There's no in between. There's a standard that's set, and then you're the head coach of your position group, and you're, it's your responsibility to drive drive that home to the players so you know, like when i said before when when we were sucking at blocking guess who the head right. coach came to right this guy right. Guess who this guy went to his receivers 
All those guys, right. You know, so the vision's from the head coach, and it goes to the assistants. And then our, it's our job as assistants to, to sell it to the players. And I think that's important for coaches to listen. You know, A, you might not be the head coach or OC or a DC. I mean, I'm not the OC, the DC, or anything. I'm the wide receiver coach for MRA football. And every day that I go to work, it's not to be the best wide receiver coach in the state. It's not to be the best wide receiver coach in the nation. It's to be the best wide receiver coach for our kids that I coach daily. And that's it. I think a lot of times we get like the next job or we're looking to what can I do to get better? What can, well, what can you do better to be where your feet are and where you're grounded and where you're planted? And um, I mean, our, our staff has stayed intact for the last two years, three years now. And I think that's one reason why we went 24 and three in the last two years. You know, there's there's that accountability piece. But there's also that standard that's been set again by our head coach that's given to us and then we give it to the kids. Yeah, for sure. That's great. And uh, just checking the chat here, coach, we do not have any more questions. So I think we're going to wrap up here unless you have anything else that you want to add. Uh, I don't want to cut you off. No, I'm good, man. Okay. I'm just thankful, honored, blessed guys. I mean, this is what y'all do is phenomenal. Uh, the fact that you can be on a live clinic and sharing what you do inside of your football program uh, with guys all over the country, it, it's amazing. Um, you know, I want to try and find that badge for you thing one more time. If I can figure out how to work this thing, I think I do. Hold on. Let's go. Uh, did you share your screen? I did. I think I just did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There there one. Let me go and find the, the badges. Give me two seconds. Movies. Uh, let me see. There's some pictures in there. Um, yep, there they, yeah, are. there they are. That's right. Yep. There they are. Uh, so, you know, that's us. That's Cuddle, Superfly. I can tell you all those guys' name. That's Hayes Puckett. Uh, that's a new kid that came. Listen to this now. His name was, uh, we're trying to think of something. He came from San Diego. Braden Mills is his name. And we're like, Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Ron Burgundy. Uh, there you that, go. That's Sam Polis. That's Rafe Vinson. Um, you know, you, you can just see T Bone Smooth, Gunslinger. That's our quarterback. People were like, why is a quarterback in the ARB? I was like, uh, without him, we don't get thrown passes. <laughs> so right. he's an honorary member inside of uh, inside the ARB. So uh, there they were right there. I knew I'd find it some way. To show you where those call signs were. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Coach, we uh, appreciate your time. As always, you can follow Coach John Weaver on Twitter, at MRA Coach Weaver. Uh, Coach, we appreciate your time again. Like I said, it's the second time you've come on, the second time you've knocked out of the park. So uh, <laughs> we, we appreciate, appreciate your it. time as always. And, uh, yeah, go give Coach Weaver a follow if you haven't already on Twitter. And hey, we'll be back. Quick. Yeah, Real go ahead. Quick question. I got to go out to those coaches that are listening. If you have anything that helps our wide receivers, please send it our way. Um, and if you want my clinic drill tape, shoot me a DM uh, or shoot me an email and uh, I'll get it to you. If you want that drill tape, uh, I'll send it to you uh, via huddle or um, I have it as a Google slide that I'll present to you as well. And you can have it. But if you have anything that will help my guys, I'd love to see it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, as well. And we will take it here at Victory as well. So we'll all pass it around, Coach. So, uh, yeah, again, absolutely. at MRA, Coach Weaver, I'm Chris Haddad. Ryan Swingle is here as well. We'll see you guys next week, 8 p.m. Eastern time, every Tuesday night.